Hey, welcome to another week here at the Tolerin. We don't have any construction video this week because we were out of town on Saturday. Um, we were actually the whole week in Washington DC. Um, did some uh, sightseeing with the kids and also I had to do some work. I was on site with a client and then um, we stayed um, up until sa uh, Saturday afternoon with um, our brother-in-law in, in Maryland. Um, and then now since it's Mother's Day I am um, just here for a few hours um, after we did some uh, some stuff together as a family. So it's going to be a short video, just a few little updates, um, a few questions that were asked. I want to go into detail and give you guys some, some updates there. So first thing, I wanted to give an update about the electrical. Um, our electrician was here. You can see uh, compared to last week, we now have only one meter, um, one meter box and just one big PVC conduit going down into the basement and the same thing one cable with con or conduit with cables going up into um, going all the way up um, I think he did a really good job um, it's gonna make it very easy for me to redo the siding um, and still be able to do it while it's already done I should be able to just loosen the uh, screws and do the siding behind it and then uh, screw it back in um, and I think this is also a very nice <coughs> feature of just having a full box here at the end that gives us the feature uh, gives us the opportunity to replace anything in the future if we need to and we just run either more wires or um, a different wire in the basement when we need to the next thing that I need to do is I need to remeasure some of the window widths um, I want to make sure it's possible to fit um, the standard size windows or if at least want to see if it's possible to use the standard size windows because it's going to be much more expensive to order a custom size and the window constructions um, have changed over the years a little bit so um, on the sizing I have to actually measure on the trim because I want to reuse the trim. The trim is in pretty good condition in most areas. So therefore we want to use the same size um, windows if possible that fit right into the trim. So I want to remeasure that just to verify that um, it will work. So the nicest thing about the electrical upgrade that was just finished here this week is that we now have power in all the floors. Um, so I don't have to run extension cords from the first floor up all the way to the uh, second or third floor anymore um, which is a really nice thing and then obviously having lights so even if it's dark outside if it's uh, cloudy um, or raining I can still work on the inside without um, too much issues um, the one thing is the attic is not completely finished yet um, still Thomas has to put in the breakers into the panel upstairs so therefore that part is not finished but otherwise we have power everywhere so um, probably next week when Thomas is here the last uh, the, the next time then he will be able to finish the sub panel in the attic and then we will basically have power uh, fully completed so I want to take the time to on answer a couple questions um, Bruce was asking here on the last video kind of which he wanted a little bit more details about the window companies um, that we were looking at and which ones we have chosen or why um, so it's one of his first questions was um, which window company had the insane lead time. Um, it actually is Anderson. We really would have liked to use Anderson. Um, I've used them in the past. I installed windows actually for a living in um, Denver for a while and um, we used Anderson a lot. So I really like their product. Um, we wanted to use the E-Series, which is an aluminum um, clad window. So it has aluminum on the outside and has wood interior. Uh, we wanted to use that window, but that we did, uh, window has a lead time of 50 weeks right now. So obviously that's just not uh, gonna do it. Um, the next step down <coughs> of a fiberglass uh, material exterior, I think with the A series a or the 400 series, has a pretty decent lead time still with 18 weeks. So we, m we actually have not ordered yet because we were out of town this week, but um, they are one of our top favorites now. And then the other uh, window that we're really looking at, or the window company that we are seriously looking at is Marvin right now. Um, we have uh, on the Marvin, 
We like the Elevate and the Signature Series. The Signature Series is very similar to the, um, C, uh, the E Series at um, Anderson. It has an aluminum clad exterior, looks very traditional and um, has a wood interior that you can buy in unfinished or in pre-stained. We would probably buy the unfinished um, so that we can match the stain ourselves on the, um, with, other, uh, with the other wood inside that we already have, the reused, reclaimed wood. Um, and then <clears throat> the Elevate series is the fiberglass material on the outside. Um, the difference, obviously, the, what's, so what's the difference? Um, they're really a comparable product. They both should hold up um, time very well. The difference is really that the price. Um, obviously, aluminum is a little bit more maintenance-free long-term, especially over 20, 30 years. Um, on the fiberglass one, you might get some fading from the sun. Um, less so nowadays, but you still have that um, potential. So longevity, of course, on the aluminum one and the price is usually about two, three hundred dollars a window more. Um, there is one window company that we really wanted to go with, which was Loen, which is a Canadian based company. They have probably one of the best windows that you can buy in the United States unless you are ordering something from uh, from Europe um, that just has a different standard of windows um, in the problem, obviously, with European windows would be that they are don't look very traditional American Victorian style. So that's kind of why we don't want to choose one of the European style windows. Um, but Lowen also has a traditional series and the traditional series is very uh, comparable. But unfortunately, um, they just increased their price and now it's um, almost twice as much as um, all the other window companies, even on the aluminum cloud ones. So therefore, um, we probably just because of price, we won't be able to um, do the low-end windows. Um, the second question that Bruce was asking is what are we doing? Uh, are you looking at double hung windows? And the uh, answer is yes. Um, we want to keep it as traditional as possible. Traditionally, the windows were made double hung or single hung, um, which means uh, the difference between a double hung and a single hung is um, is the windows. We have, we have two sashes. We have the bottom sash and the top sash. Um, and the bottom sash is always movable, so it can move up and down. Um, on a single hung, the difference between the single hung and the double hung is that the, that the top sash cannot move down on a single hang, a single hung versus the double hung. Um, you can move both um, sashes independently of each other. Um, so we are going, since that's what, what traditionally was in, in our house, we are going again with double hung windows. The third question from Bruce was if we're doing any leaded glass, um, so we are not doing any leaded glass. The options that we have are very limited on the window companies that we are cho choosing. But um, what we are going to do is in the attic, there's a few spots where we want to do some stained glass where we um, know that there was originally stained glass in some of the windows. So we are going to actually have stained glass insert made um, and they will be just um, inserted afterwards on the standard double um, double glassed window. Um, we will just have to insert on the inside or on the outside. It depends. You can ma uh, make them either way. Um, where we live, there is a pretty famous stained glass artist. So we will either potentially just um, contact him and see if we if he can teach us how to do it ourselves. So we can uh, maybe do the stained glass ourselves. Um, or otherwise um, just order them from him. Um, so that's gonna be the option for that. We will also have some areas in the bathrooms where we want some frosted glass. Um, so frosted glass is really just um, where the inside or the or of the two panels, one of the sides, either the outside or in between the two glass panels, one of the glass sides there has some rough edges. So that makes it rough, to, uh, hard to see through. Um, you can still, the light will still come through, it's just um, you won't be able to see through clearly. Um, obviously that's for privacy reasons, so you don't always have to close your curtains. Um, you can still have the window open with, um, without a curtain and um, get the light in, but um, just have the privacy there. A few other people have given a shout out to Thomas here over the last few weeks. 
um, that he has been doing a great job with all the electrical that he has been helping with. Um, it, um, I, I really appreciate Thomas myself. Having him here every week is giving me obviously some other um, motivation to just be here and working hard on the house but then also just the amount of work that he can do by himself without me having to overlook anything and um, him just working away and um, helping me is really tremendous. So we're making a lot of progress, especially here with the electrical in the last few weeks. So that was a tremendous help. So I wanna also give a shout out to Thomas um, as that. Another question that Kathy um, has been asking here in the last few weeks, it's a very common question about roof construction in the United States if we need a rich vent and what we're doing if we don't um, put one in. Um, actually, based of, first of all, the construction of our roof, how it's built, it's first of all not possible because you can, um, how the rafters are, are working, they're not always going all the way down. So there's no way of actually giving, um, get, getting venting into those. You need a rich vent if you're doing an asphalt shingled roof. But since we're not doing an asphalt shingled roof, um, we do not need a rich vent. Uh, with a either metal roof or a stone slate roof, uh, rich vents are not required because the purpose of a rich vent is to cool or to keep the sheathing and therefore the um, top layer material cool enough so that it doesn't get damaged. Um, with asphalt shingles, um, when they get too hot, um, they start melting and the lifespan um, gets much shorter. So therefore a rich vent will uh, counteract that because there's gonna be airflow that moves on the bottom of the roof to the top continuously and um, cools the roof, even if it's hot outside. Um, a roof will still get much, much hotter than the air outside. So therefore having continuous air moving through will cool the roof. But since we're doing a, a stone slate roof, we do not need a rich vent. We are going to spray foam the whole roof um, afterwards completely shut. So therefore we won't um, have any issues that, um, or we shouldn't have any issues based on that. Well, I know this was a very short video, but I hope everybody had a wonderful Mother's Day weekend and I will see you guys the next time I turn on the camera. Bye.